What's up, Comic Universe? Uh, DPZ here, and here to give you a review of Invader Zim, Enter the Florpus. Now, you're probably wondering why we haven't done uh, Static Clean yet, which is the Rocco's Modern Life special. Reason being is because C-Dubs uh, said that he had done a review, he just hasn't had time to post it, so we're just going to wait for him on that one. Uh, I will say that I wanted to get this review out as soon as possible. I was just busy as all get out, and I wanted to get it out on the day of the premiere. But, hey, a day late is still better late than never. Am I right? So anyway, Invader Zim Enter the Florpus. Oh boy, where do I begin with this? This was really good. I really enjoyed this special. Um, it really did feel... Um, it really did feel like a resurrection of the show. Maybe that hopefully this will lead stuff. I've been hearing nothing but good things from other uh, uh, sites and reviews that they've all enjoyed this. Um, the show, the episode, for those wondering, I guess, I don't know if I should call it a movie or a special. It is like an hour and 11 minutes, so I guess. Um, I don't know what to call it, honestly. I, I, I guess special. I don't know. I guess special is the best word for something like this, because honestly, it's kind of, um, honestly, it's, it's really, that's what it is. So, in that case, um, in this story, uh, Zim has, it's been a few years, and if you've actually, if you've actually read the comics, the Oni Press comics, this actually takes a lot from the Oni Press comics in the beginning. It's right out of the Oni Press comics, um, from the start with Dib being like, um, He's like, hey, I've been, you know, just trapped in my room forever, just watching and waiting and, you know, all that. So he's just been kind of like watching and waiting and just kind of like, I don't know what to do, you know, I'm just waiting for Zim and Zim's hiding in the toilet this whole time. But it really does go in its own direction and Zim actually discovers that the tallest are not going to be visiting him. Not just because they hate him, mind you, but because they travel in a straight line. If you guys remember, the tallest are just there are just the, the leaders of the race because they're taller than everyone. So yeah, <laughs> yep, it's good to have this show back and everyone still be an idiot. Um, I think that the animation. Let's talk about the animation real quick. Obviously, it's not the same as the original show. I gotta be honest. Um, it took me a while to get into the animation. It really took me a while to get into the animation and some of the character designs. It really took me a moment to get really... Because it was really like what made Invade... One of, the, one of the great things about Zim was the aesthetics of that kind of gross and gritty kind of feel that the show had. In here, it's a lot cleaner, and some of the scenes look a little unfinished. I don't know, maybe that was just me, that the animation just looked a little unfinished in some of the cases. I don't know if that was the if that was a problem or not. I don't know, because there, this sh this was in development hell and just thrown on Netflix just with the Rocco's Modern Life special. Uh, thanks a lot for that, Nick. Um, so yeah, the animation, it took me a while with some of the redesigns, especially Gaz and Dr. Membrane. I don't know what it is, but those two bothered me the most in terms of like how those characters were redesigned. Um, but the story itself, it feels like Invader Zim. It feels like something like Invader Zim. Like, there are some jokes in here that I was like, oh my god, I can't believe they got away with that. And I know what you're thinking, oh, it's on Netflix. It, it clearly knew that it was going to be on Netflix. No, not even Joan and Vasquez and Eric Trueheart knew that they were going to be on Netflix. So, suffice it to say that they were probably going to, if this show, I mean, if this special was going to be on uh, Nickelodeon like it was intended to be, I'm pretty sure some of these jokes would be like, Oh my god! <laughs> because there are some jokes in there that are like, Oh my god, I can't believe they got away with that. Like, that one too. I think they just killed some people. But at the same time, with the animation and how it felt like it just took a while to get into, they also had a ball with the animation because the whole story is, is that Earth is being, thanks to Zim's latest scheme, the whole point of the show, the whole plot of this is that Zim accidentally ripped a hole in the universe and it's sucking all of re the planets into multiple realities at once. It's kind of like, it, it, it is kind of like the end of, it is like the Weird Mageddon saga from Gravity Falls. It, I did get that feeling of the Weird Mageddon storyline from Gravity Falls, so I did, uh, um, I was, that was my first thought. It was like, oh, it's, we're going into Weird Mageddon again. Okay, that, that, all right, guess we're doing this again. 
but they did have a ball with some of the animation. If you haven't seen it, you'll see what I mean. Um, there's just some great use of, of different kinds of animation, like there's anime influence in here. There's just so much they do in here um, with the show and with the budget they had. It's, it's astonishing that they managed to get this all done without um, Nickelodeon like being shitty to them in the least. Like, thank God for that. They managed to get away with so much in so, um, in so, in so little time. Because I also heard rumors that this kind of was on a clock. So, that was another uh, major aspect. I was wondering if that was going to, if that was hindering, um, the show. If that was going to be a hindrance to the show in, it, in any way, shape, or form. Which it may have. I'm going to be honest. It may have, especially how you see the animation um, in some cases. Because I don't know. Again, it goes back to, did this feel unfinished? It felt a little unfinished to me. I don't know. It just felt just a wee bit unfinished. Maybe that's just me and how I'm way more um, just so used. And I'm pretty sure all you guys, fellow Invader Zim fans out there, are equally are like, yeah, we were so used to the dark and blood, you know, the kind of gritty and gross kind of um, artwork in the show that it kind of contrasts with some of the gross stuff that in here, like, it feels like a bad juxtaposition in a way. All in all, this was really fun. Um, it is, hopefully this will get enough traction to maybe get a Netflix... Um, Netflix uh, Invader Zim show. I don't see... I'm going to be honest. I don't see it coming back to Nickelodeon itself. If anywhere else, it'd probably be on, Nic it'd probably be on Netflix because, A, I think uh, Disney... Uh, not Disney. Nickelodeon and Netflix are working out a deal. Um, that's what I heard. And hopefully this can be the start of that deal because, yeah, they're obviously go um, banking on a lot of nostalgia. So, yeah. Hopefully we can get an Invader Zim Netflix series... I don't know if we'll get the original animation back, but that would be cool. Um, but we're probably going to see, I'm going to be honest, we're probably going to see this animation. There's nothing yet to confirm that, oh, we are totally getting, a, you know, an anime, a, you know, Netflix Invader Zim show. There's been no confirmation of that, so don't hold your breath. I wouldn't be surprised if we did get some manner from how much popular, you know, how popular this special has been. So maybe they're, they're uh, talking about it as we speak. Who knows? All in all... Animation errors beside, beside, this was really fun. It was great to have the entire cast back for the show. Everyone was on point. Richard Hovitz kills it once again as Invader Zim. Um, everyone. It still, like, it still blows my mind that um, the same voice actress for Gaz was the same voice actress for Ed in Cowboy Bebop. And she's also a Broadway singer. Yeah, she's also Rika in Digimon Tamers. It blows my mind that the same person who voices Gaz also was on Broadway for, I believe she was in Wicked? Like, she did Wicked before anything else. She also was Rika, the vo English voice actor for Rika in um, Digimon Tamers, and this. So it really blows your mind, um, especially how well she sings, but I'm getting off track. But yeah, that was another major thing, is that everyone in here is just on point in terms of voice acting, so... Animation aside, I really enjoyed this. So if you are an Invader Zim fan, I don't know what you're doing sitting here, you know, listening to this review. Go check it out. You will really love it. You know, if you were a diehard fan of the show, it was worth the wait to see this. It was so cool. Um, and it just all around great. And uh, yeah. So anyway, guys, if you have seen the Enter the Florpus uh special on Netflix. What did you guys think of it? Did you guys like it? Hate it? Comment below, let us know, and if you're new here, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, be a part of Earth's Mighty Subscribers, um, and share this video, share this review with all your friends, family, and anyone else who follows you on Instagram. Um, yeah. So, once again, I'm DPZ, and we will see you right here once more in the universe.